Hey everybody, it's Bust with Bust Builds Decks number 21, continuing our playthrough of Bellatro. And so for today's video, we might do a little two birds with one stone action. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it feels, but uh, we've been trying to make our way through the red stakes on all of the decks. And I believe I've beat the red stake on everything except the deck we haven't unlocked because we haven't beat the orange stake, and then the anaglyph deck. And so the anaglyph deck is the one to me that seems like it should be a very strong deck in terms of doing the uh, the speed run, beating the game in 12 rounds or less. And so uh, first and foremost, I want to focus on just beating this, right? If you really want to uh, do the speed run thing, uh, you can just play on the white stake so you have no... Uh, detriments to the game it should be much easier to do that way but you know it strikes me as the anaglyph deck is very good uh, at that kind of thing at, at trying to win in a short number of rounds since you get the double tag for beating the boss and then you can skip uh, much more frequently getting big bonuses and so we'll see you know if it, if it feels like uh it's going good you know we'll put the tip in see what it feels like as the as the parlance goes and then we'll see if we can't uh uh, just beat this first and foremost but we'll we'll try and go for the the 12 round or less if it put, seems to put itself together but reasonable enough start here uh the the rare joker skip is fine the big bloss or the big bloss <laughs> the the 15 gold for defeating the boss is very good and so we just need to get uh the 600 chips on the first round ante here very doable very strong start uh, to this run now i'm not the hugest fan of the rare joker skip the the rare jokers are all super polarized in the sense that some of them are very good and some of them are very bad and so it's kind of a feels bad moment if uh you don't get a good rare joker but sometimes dims to breaks you know but reasonable enough start here we have the the very good makings of a flush hand so we'll kick that off these are usually good for like 275 or so uh, and so uh, a flush and another flush and then a small hand should get us out of the round Ooh, 312 even bigger than expected and so here i'm not the hugest fan of dropping two pairs in spots like this it's not really worth a ton of chips i mean if you want to count it out it's like 20 22 plus 16 what is that like 40 so that gets you 40 plus 20 is 60 it's only 120 or so <laughs> look at look at how good i'm getting at math hot damn but uh, we'll just uh, try and shuffle up to some big cards here, see if we can't uh, put together the makings of a straight or a full house off of these aces or something. Looks like we hit an ace high flush. We've got a nice little high roll there. Oh, that should be more than enough to finish us off on this hand. If the previous flush with three big cards was 312, this should be a little bit better, 332. Good stuff. And so, nice little start. Let's see how... See how this kicks off here. See if we get a good joker. Definitely getting fifteen dollars. All right, cash it out. Moving on up. And so, what do we got here? X two malt. If the played hand contains a flush, I mean, it's fine. It's not. Uh, this is this is actually very mid uh, to me in terms of what you can get out of the rare jokers. You would prefer to find like X two malt if you have a pair or something, but. Uh, it's certainly better than uh, a lot of the, the like super swingy ones. And so I think that would be fine to pick up. Otherwise, having the cards show up multiple times isn't that spectacular to me. One card available in the shop is okay. It's not that great here in the early game. I tend to look at overstock as being just like a reroll, right? If you're not familiar with how it works, um, when you put the one additional card in the shop, it just rerolls the shop. And so you could buy a reroll for $5 or you could buy this voucher for 10. And in that you know kind of scheme of things, it's not that bad of a deal, but uh, we're looking to at least ramp up our economy just a little bit here in the early game. So I'll buy the flush uh, thing. We're gonna skip out on everything else, see if we can't get a little bit of economy going. Now, what do we got here? Upgrading high card by three levels is quite good. Uh, it doesn't uh, tie in with the flush thing, but taking high card up six levels <laughs> right at the get-go here definitely gives us a lot of build around. And it does kind of work with the flush in the sense that it's really hard to make multiple flushes. And so uh, we can play one flush and then a high card, then a high card, then a high card, then we should definitely be out of the round. So I'm going to skip that. Uh, the the one gold for the garbage tag is garbage, so we will play that round. But very interesting having this kick off with the uh, 
the the level seven high card. What does that score? Curious to see. Looks like the, the base was at 65 by seven. So the, it gets us right up there with the four of a kind scoring, slightly worse than a straight flush. Okay, okay, off to the races. So yeah, I, I think I'm on board with this. Like I, I'm pretty confident that the the flush here. Well, I, I guess I should say it, it'll be close to finishing off the round, assuming that we hit it right. If we were playing the uh, the the big flush for like 300, and now if we're gonna X2 the malt, it should be hitting for like 600. You know, let's let's take a peek. I guess that's how the math works, right? <laughs> it's going to hit for 560. Yeah, that's how it works here. And so, yeah, this is this is kind of how I expect these runs to go. And so here we can legitimately just play high card ace. It's going to be fine. I'm curious to see how much this costs, but this is kind of like a discard on its own, right? Um, playing four cards and only scoring the one. Now this opens us up to play the flush on the back end. And so... Yeah, that was nice to see. It's very interesting to where our level 7 high card uh, scored essentially the same thing as kind of a mid-range flush with the X2 multiplier attached to it. And so, curious to see how this run goes. Th those are, you know, I, I always, always, always talk about not trying to half-ass anything, right? The, the great Ron Swanson quote of don't half-ass anything, you should just whole-ass one thing, right? I would rather just be whole assing high cards out here or whole assing flushes, but there is a nice little bit of, of uh, synergy between the two to where we chase after the one flush. It's hard to make the second. Playing high cards as the backup feels kind of nice. All right, but reasonable start here. Lots of good stuff. And so bootstraps is pretty strong. You get plus two malt for every five gold that you have. Uh, so it's a very easy... Uh, build around in terms of the economy and so I like it we have two arcana packs down here we're going to start by cracking both of these uh, ideally we'll hit some money makers in here we'll hit some hermits and then we'll switch back into uh, purchasing the boots after that but what do we have convert to clubs convert to spades convert to hearts well I guess that ties into our flush thing let's just convert to hearts well actually convert to clubs is going to be slightly better right we're going to be turning three big cards into clubs up here. Okay, sure, I'm convinced. Feels slightly better. All right, Arcana pack number two. No hermits. Like, hermits are the only one I know. Like, I, I recognize the picture, I recognize the name. All of the other tarot cards just don't do it. But we could still convert to hearts, right? Uh, we've... I don't remember what... The, the makeup of our deck looked like, oh, hearts are at the bottom. We took three hearts out and put um, uh, three clubs in, so I, I probably don't want to go after that one. So if we're not taking it, let's just go for the wild card. We'll go ahead and slap it on the king. Not as good as I would like, but not terrible at the end of the day. Pick up the boots. All right, next round. Probably should have picked up that gold card, right? The, the thing with gold card is when you know you're going to play your final hand you can just play it and it costs three gold and gives you three gold so it's a, a just basically uh free and then after that if you activate it you get a bonus right it's better than free at that point and there is the random stuff like there's the rare joker that gives you like x3 multiplier if you have 16 enhanced cards in your deck it gives you a little bit of, of fringe value that way as well so we probably should have picked that up uh, but whoopsies i'm not perfect what are we gonna do here the the one and seven cards get drawn face down that's fine clubs are the one we're shooting for right if we want to sort by suit this may or may not be a club so let's let's just hmm. all right we'll take it we'll take a discard let's see if we can't deduce what that uh what the flavor of that card is if we sort by suit still up in here in the in the high card space hmm. hey this this feels like a, a very ballsy move it has to be an ace or a king or a queen i i don't know the order the suits show up out here right do they match this way go spate heart club diamond i would assume that's the way it goes so it could be a heart all right i don't 
I don't have the stones to do it. We'll just we'll just discard everything that's not a club. All right, now we can we can high card into this flush. Is that a straight flush? A little bit short. Okay. Still a very high scoring hand. All right, thirteen hundred on the round. Probably just good to play high cards from here on out. We were, we did it. Good stuff, good stuff. All right. Yeah, reasonable enough start. Reasonable start. All right, got a little money. Raise the cap on interest does work nicely here. Uh, the voucher we have at the bottom with the bootstraps. What else do we got? 100 chips for a straight I'm not interested in. Juggler is fine. It's not super strong, but it's not bad. It's a good early-ish game joker that you eventually just sell. But let's kick things off with the Arcana pack here, see what happens. There's the Hermit. That's the one we're looking for. That'll take us up to 28. And then, I mean, I definitely want this voucher. It just ties in with the, the Joker. Like, this is a exceptionally strong flat malt Joker in the bootstraps, and so I like to build it up. All right, we'll take, we'll, we'll take the plus one hand size. It's not that strong, but we can just sell it for two later. And having, you know, over the course of the next few rounds, having plus one hand for two gold isn't a horrible deal. So how do we feel about these? We can skip on the rare Joker again and then play against the Celestial. And then the base chips, the boss isn't that bad. Just like Mega Celestial's one of the, the worst ones to have to pick up. I'm trying to think here as well. We have to beat Anti 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That's 6. So we have round 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we still have like four rounds we can skip after that. I think we'll play against the... Uh, We'll play against the big blind here. Oh, I forgot about the double thing. I keep forgetting about the, the core feature of this run. All right, so let's see. Let's We don't quite have to just discard the clubs, even though it is our most common one. What do we have? I guess we can try and hit these spades. Didn't come together. Right, try again. There's one. <laughs> Took a lot of work to get there. <laughs> it's not not a, a particularly strong hand here. What does that get us at 1100? Kind of want to push in towards this club flush the rest of the way. We'll get one more discard out of this. And then uh, we, we can just start playing high cards from this point forward. So we've got three clubs. We'll play high card ace. Right, this kind of counts like a discard, but it's going to score very well. Okay, I don't think we have to worry about losing this round. Now we have picked up the wild card king. I'm still just going to play another high card ace. Uh, we'll keep the five, right? King, ace, queen, eight, six. So we can play the four with it. And we'll just see if another club turns up. Uh, so we're guaranteed to have the flush now. I assume it's probably good enough. I think it's going to score for like 1,500. What the fuck just happened? Did we play a pair of fours? God damn it. <sighs> I didn't notice. I didn't notice. I, I don't know if this is going to be a 2100 point flush. <laughs> if that... Oh, God damn it. I didn't even realize we were playing a pair. Come on, don't end, don't end it this way. Don't end it this way. God damn it. Well... <laughs> this is this is this is what I don't know what to do with these videos now, right? I, I feel like I, I want to get it a little bit further along, but this is also the kind of space as to where, you know, is this really worthy of a video to put out? You know, I I think we have a very strong lesson to learn, right? This is like playing Legends of Rune Terra and just not checking the Oracle's eye. Right, I remember like with the last big Legends of Runeterra event, 
Majin Bay was in like a 45 minute karma set mirror match and he didn't check the oracle's eye to see if like it was i think it was a concussive palm to see if a concussive palm was going to double or not right because uh Ser or who is it seraphine only doubles like the first time you played the card and he didn't check the oracle's eye to see if the double was going to happen and i've not checked the oracle's eye like dozens and dozens and dozens of times and this is like the the big lesson to learn right is when you're just kind of like speed running through here and trying to get that high card you can look over to the left of the screen to the left of the joker it tells you what fucking hand you're about to play and uh we should have just looked to see if it said high card because that completely just bombed what it felt like it had the makings of a very strong run right our economy was in good order we were going to win this round we we're going to play against an easy boss in the shop in between we got double rare joker about to come up we have good build around with the x2 flush we have good build around with the boots and like we just completely punted because we didn't look to make sure that our hand was a high card <laughs> and so i i'm going to consider it worthy of a video uh, if you disagree let me know if you agree let me know because i think it's at least a good lesson learned in that sense and it's a it was at least a decent intro in terms of a start in terms of what we're trying to pull off here but man that is a a real bummer to get you know just about to the mid game and have everything fall apart Whew, damn good stuff i had fun with that i hope you did too because that is going to do it for us today so hope everyone enjoyed the video Hoping maybe you learned a thing or two along the way. I had a good time watching. This is Bustin' Me. Thank you for being here.